So just like Julian Assange, when the regime doesn't like your reporting, apparently it makes you disappear. Now, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, from from their publications and other times like Jamal Khashoggi, they actually make you disappear. Mm -hmm. um, so here is the reporter that we want to talk about, Miguel Almagar. He's the NBC News reporter. A few weeks ago, we brought you the story, the mysterious story of the NBC News reporter. Here he is, who told us the truth about what happened in the Paul Pelosi story. After his report aired, which was factually accurate, according to the police and the district attorney's filing, okay, that's where this information came from, and separately then confirmed by another NBC News report who witnessed the body cam footage and confirmed Almagar's story. He went missing, gone. He was suspended from NBC. Uh, his report was deleted from NBC's website and it was taken off of Twitter completely, gone. The story is gone, you can't find it anymore, disappeared. And now no one has heard from Miguel. I mean, no one professionally well, has heard from him. And when we covered that story three weeks ago, I saw someone in the comments saying, yeah, he's, he's missing. So he's been missing since that story. Hmm. So that was a week and then now it's about a month. It's over a month now, he's gone. Yeah, Not a peep. He's been kept off the air by NBC, no mention of it. Um, and he's not on Twitter. No, not a word about this. Gone. So let me just play. This is the original NBC News report that got him disappeared. Craig, good morning. When officers arrived here at the Pelosi home exactly a week ago today, they initially didn't have any idea exactly what was going on. They knew they had a high priority call on their hand. What was unclear, what was happening inside the property just behind me. This morning, Paul Pelosi is home, back at the house that became a crime scene a week ago today. NBC News learning new details about the moments police arrived. Sources familiar with what unfolded in the Pelosi residence now revealing when officers responded to the high priority call, they were seemingly unaware they'd been called to the home of the Speaker of the House. After a knock and announce, the front door was opened by Mr. Pelosi. The 82 year old did not not immediately declare an emergency or tried to leave his home, but instead began walking several feet back into the foyer toward the assailant and away from police. It's unclear if the 82 year old was already injured or what his mental state was, say sources. According to court documents, when the officer asked what was going on, defendant smiled and said everything's good. But instantaneously, a struggle ensued as police clearly said saw David DePap strike Paul Pelosi in the head with a hammer. After tackling the suspect, officers rushed to Mr. Pelosi, who was lying in a pool of blood. What we do know is he brutally attacked Mr. Pelosi and attempted to kill him. After spending several days in the ICU, Pelosi, who is recovering from a fractured skull and serious injuries to his arm and hand, is now home where Capitol Police remain on alert. Investigators have previously said Pelosi did not know DePap when the 42-year-old broke into his home. Why Pelosi didn't try to flee or tell responding officers he was in distress is unclear. Fear takes over. So that's the original report. But it was really the first part of that story that got him in trouble because then it was disappeared from the website. The idea that Paul Pelosi opened the door himself. Which NBC has, well, the local affiliates have continued to report on and right. do stories. Who opened the door? with which hand was also relevant. So certain, you know, outlets are continuing to ask this. We're not extrapolating anything that we don't know. It's just a simple, why do you open the door? Who did it? Was there somebody else there? That's, those are the questions. Right, and the district attorney, that's what it said in the district attorney's report. That's what it also said, uh, according to sources uh, who were looking at the body cam footage. This is what they said in their police report. And then the Department of Justice puts out a separate story, like a separate argument and a separate narrative about this. So who at the White House or at the House of Representatives or Nancy Pelosi's office calls up NBC in New York? It's like, look, you got a report that's on your website right now. We want it taken down. I would love to know who was colluding with these companies, like who from the, you know, who from the, who from the White House or the, the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi's office was on the phone calling NBC, asking them to remove this report. And oh, by the way, send this reporter packing. 
Now, this is not crazy, given that we had Mark Zuckerberg sitting down on a podcast saying the FBI called us about Hunter Biden's laptop. So we already know that the Justice Department or other government officials run defense on stories they don't like. This is no longer crazy talk. No. And of course, NBC and then you had the Biden administration coming out saying that, uh, you know, hey, this was an act of right wing other media outlets came out. This was a right wing political violence by an enraged Trump supporter. That story fell apart pretty quickly, right? Inflamed by right wing conspiracy theories and anti Pelosi sentiment. And then, of course, we found out that, well, DePap, the guy that attacked Pelosi, uh, was a Canadian national living in the U.S. illegally. He was a nudism enthusiast. He lived in a bus uh, with Black Lives Matter sign hanging on the school bus that he lived in. So, okay, well, I guess your story fell apart pretty quickly there, didn't it? But that still doesn't answer the question, like, where the hell is this reporter? What did he do wrong to deserve this type of treatment? Was he paid off some sort of big severance? Like, hey, just go. You're not allowed to talk. We don't want you to, you know, you're not allowed to post on social media. You're not allowed to go on the air. We're going to give you a big severance package, but we want you to retire. Yeah. Take a long vacation, I Miguel. To, I'd love to have him on the show. Miguel, if you're looking for employment, come here to Redacted. We won't redact you. Like, we would love to be able to share this story. I would love to know. I would love to know. But you know that he's being, I mean, he's either being paid to be quiet. Well, if you're a reporter and you have some sort of moral compass. Yes, but you and I both know that the, um, if he's let go, he still most likely has a non-compete in his contract. That means he can't go to another outlet. Clayton and I both worked for NBC and CBS and Fox News. And um, if for any reason we wanted to leave our contracts early, uh, we had a non-compete, meaning we couldn't go to another network. Mm. And so it's possible he just can't. And that if he speaks about it, you better believe they are going to enforce it. So they can pay you off. And keep you quiet with legal maneuvers. This is how they keep you silent. But it's an unbelievable story. And I hope. Well, I would hope it. at the very least he has some kind of severance because it doesn't seem like he did anything wrong. And, you know, he shouldn't just be out of work for this. They're like, Miguel, you're you're kind of close to retirement age now. Wouldn't you like to enjoy the holidays with your family? Here's a nice severance. But you can't ever talk about this story ever again. We got a call from Nancy Pelosi's office. So. And we don't know. We'll it's funny the out. things that, you know, you you can get a severance for for media companies. Like, yeah. you know, you can touch some ladies. You can, all of that oh, yeah, stuff. you'll get a big settlement. You'll you get can, a big settlement. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, you can say what they don't want and then you get a nice vacation. So Unbelievable. I mean, at least the call came from the Pelosi's and not the Clintons. Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, to as be honest far with you, as we know, to be we clear, don't we know. don't know. We don't have any idea. Or if it's somebody that's yeah, very that's close true. to Nancy Pelosi, right inside of NBC, yeah. one of the you know heads of NBC, we just have no idea. But clearly, if he's not working, he's been silenced, and they've scrubbed that story from their website. Something happened. I mean, you don't, you know, it's Occam's razor, right? Yeah. Figure this out. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.